record onto the cloud. Here we go. Right, everyone. So good evening and welcome to our McCarthy and Wells Nation training. Very exciting to see you all. It is the 9th of March, 2020. Can you even believe that? It's very, very exciting. So as most of you know, my name is Caroline Stalker. I'm a regional vice president with this, an independent consultant with this amazing company. And it's my absolute pleasure to train you this evening. It feels like I haven't done a training for absolutely ages since 2019. So I'm very excited for today. So first of all, without further ado, I'm going to very quickly share my screen and go through our recognition for this evening here we go won't be a moment and here we are so just quickly to whiz this out. Now, what we have done is we just slightly reduced the amount of recognition. So we're not going to show all the Discover R bomb presentation slides. We know that takes quite a while and it's not always that visible on the screen. So we're going to share that information about where all your local Discover R bomb presentations are um, on the Do More Be More page. And obviously, if uh, people are in the there's a Facebook group around UK opportunities, which is also a great place to know where your local Discover R bonds are. So very quickly, this is obviously me. And now some new independent consultants. I'm not going to read out all your names, but if you have joined us this week, a huge, huge congratulations. Woo! Fantastic. And don't forget, we have got our regular um, events every single week. So a live about the business and the products all the 30 days in our Hello Future group. Obviously, our 30 days healthy living support groups that start the first and third Monday of every month for our clients and our every single week, a seven day cleanse. And I think we are looking for people to run some of those potentially this um, this year. So if anyone would like to help to run that group, um, I think do let or let me know and I'll pass it on to whoever's doing it at the moment, Michelle, I think. Uh, well, so we've got next month's monthly nation training is on Zoom because of I think it was because of <laughs> not GTC maybe anyway it is on zoom so don't forget that one for your diary so that will be a long full nation training the team calendar is in the google drive and this is just to remind everyone to make sure you have got all the dates in your diary for this year so you go into the google drive which is accessed from the announcements post on the do more uh, the one that's got the video of danny and fiona and i think it's under 2020 or print me something like that go in and please make sure these dates in in your diary that issue at the beginning of every year so to make sure no one has any reason to find they suddenly don't have childcare or they're away or they're surprised to find that they didn't have something in their diary it's absolutely all there right through to the end of the year and now some of our recognition so obviously we are quite early in the month but unbelievably we've got a roger bannister achiever already stacy clee sponsored by christine adler which means they stacy has done her maintenance by before the halfway point so she's got another week to go uh, but congratulations stacy that is absolutely amazing and our top achievers club again i'm not going to read these out this is top personal pqv achievers for mccarthy nation well done and for this is top 150 um, QV sponsoring. Well done, everybody, McCarthy Nation. Oh, welcome to the Wells Nation. Hold on a moment. Oh, I don't know quite what happened to me, Wells Nation. Sorry about that, Wells Nation. I'll have to put it on the do more because there definitely was a slide on there before. So apologies for that. So that. Here we go. So well done to everyone. If you, if I missed you on there, put something in the chat. If you're a new DMQ or anybody else that we haven't already got on there, pop it in the chat and then we can all give you a big cheer. Also, if you helped out with any of our groups this week, pop that in there as well and we can also recognise you. So without further ado, look, we've done six minutes for all the rec. How exciting. That gives us time to go into our training for this evening, which I, I hope you're going to absolutely love. Here we go. So I'm going to share my screen again. Here we go. Now we are very excited as vice presidents and area managers. So we are going to introduce um, for these nine o'clock Monday trainings a new name. They're going to be called Motivation Monday. Woo! because we always love starting the day and um, starting the week with our amazing Arbonne training. And what we have agreed is that we are going to run a set of um, trainings over about a three or four month period, which cover all the main parts of things that we need to know about Arbonne to make sure that they are absolutely relevant, giving you all the right top tips, information and inspiration that you need to run an incredible business. So we've taken this, like talking to other national vice presidents, other nations has been the absolute best practice way of making sure that you're getting everything that you need. 
need. Um, and we're going to obviously have the same normal rotating rotation of the, um, of the presenters and so on. So today is the first of these. So I have the absolute honour of covering um, a topic which is about kind of the basics, I suppose, understanding Arbonne vision and goal setting. So just to give a little bit of context, I'm not going to go through all of these now, but you can have a little look if you can see them. So these are the sort of headings that we're going to cover over the next few weeks. You'll get a slightly different version every few months of, of kind of the similar topic, but from another different perspective. So we're going to be talking about culture and ethics, how to tell the Arbonne story, how to plan the business into your life, building a nutrition business, um, doing things in groups on your own, following up with clients, sharing the business and the other elements of what we need to build a great business. So I hope you're going to find this absolutely amazing and super, super useful. So going into my topic for this evening then, so understanding Arbonne and goal setting. Now what I wanted to do with this, I know that we have got a whole range of people, some of whom have just joined the business this week probably, some have joined maybe a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, a few months ago, and some have been here for years and years. But what I wanted to do was just go really back and revisit some of the key areas about what makes this business special, how it works, and how that then flows into how we set goals for ourselves, okay? So obviously, congratulations, we're all part of an amazing incredible company here obviously loads of 40 years of heritage proven success very strong ethics member of the direct sales association b corp certified all the things we know that make up on absolutely incredible exceptional products a global business hundreds of thousands of clients millions of um of millions of clients sorry hundreds of thousands of independent consultants and all coming from this incredible vision of petter if anyone doesn't know petter if you're new to the business this is him and his family down there in or yeah down there at the left um, and we do have some lovely incredible videos of petter and i love just knowing that that's where he's original vision came from and watching some of those old videos so that we know that what we're doing every single day is helping to live his vision of allowing people to flourish and transform their lives. And so now you've all started your own business, obviously there's 79 of you on this call at the moment and the others who will watch on record later. Everyone here has decided that they want to run an Arbonne business. And what we need to do now is to help you to take that dream, whatever your vision is for why you decided to run your own business and then use some goals and some planning to make that dream turn into a reality because we all know that without having goal setting and plans a dream is just a dream it's not uh, you know it doesn't turn into something it's like I, at the moment we've spent 10 years as a family dreaming about going to Australia but it's not until you start you know deciding what dates you're going to go and booking the airplane and booking the hotels and making arrangements that actually that dream becomes an actual reality so what I want you to do is like as we go through this presentation is supersize your vision so think like why did I start this what did I want to achieve and can I do something even more incredible with this business really be thinking about getting your own personal vision and your why really clear and remembering that then at the end of the day this is a business it's effort-based every single business every single job you do will be effort-based and you have to do the work to get to the end point so my husband after 14 and a half years of training started a couple of weeks ago as a consultant um, in a new city and aesthetics consultant but he didn't just dream of becoming a medic he had to go to university work for years at university and then go through the stages of getting progressively better in his job and that's exactly what we do in our bond too okay so i know this is stating the obvious but we run a business like any other so i've just put some pictures and images here of other businesses which are real businesses you might know where people buy things a bit similar to ours so chemists department stores and um, health food shops they might go to a gym buy something online through amazon at a spa and all of those businesses are no different to ours all of them are, and all of us are only earning money when we're helping our clients to enjoy and buy products and services you can do lots of arbon lots of thinking about up on lots of reading personal development books lots of rearranging your office and writing down things on bits of paper but ultimately if clients aren't buying products from us um, and helping to change their lives through these amazing products we are not making money so we need to stay really focused on how we make that happen and also just like any of these other businesses here people in any business if they want to grow to something bigger than just themselves they recruit people into their business to fill key positions in their business and um, so if you think about i don't know let's say a hairdresser 
that if you want to be a one man band hairdresser and cut hair in your kitchen, that's fine. You stay like that. It's just you working, trading time for money. If you want to set up a salon, then you have multiple stylists and you have the other people, the receptionist and the hair washing person and various other things. And obviously then you grow your business and we are no different to any other business. Sometimes I think it's easy not to see our business as a business, perhaps because we don't have a physical premises. And um, so we don't really understand that that's kind of, it's a business like any other. So all we do, whoops, it, yeah. So we run our own business and then we help other people to do the same. It's not a difficult business. So we're going to find other people who also want to run a business um, and create more versions of you effectively. And that is very similar to a lot of retail outlets now. So lots and lots of businesses now grow by franchising. So if you think about common shops and things that you would know, like Subway, Specsavers, McDonald's, Costa Coffee, they're all franchises. So someone had one idea, they were running their own one single shop and then they thought I can only sell so many sandwiches from my little sandwich shop on one high street so if I want to grow my business I need to open more branches of subways and so they franchise that they give someone who wants to run their own business the chance to run that other business but under the umbrella of their business so they're giving them the training and some of the infrastructure and so on so we're doing that just very much the same as um, as a lot of those other businesses and obviously we get paid a small override for the genuine work that we do to help those people to get set up in their businesses now we have to i know this is of again stating the obvious but we have to remember to go to work regularly like any job requires you to go to work any business requires you to go to work and you need to go to work regularly if you were opening up your restaurant and you only went on a monday afternoon one week and a thursday afternoon the other week and then you didn't go for three weeks because you were a bit busy doing something else and then you went again for another couple of days and then you wondered why your restaurant didn't work very well that's like our business it needs consistency consistency is the key to everything so we open up our business that's super exciting and then what we need to do is tell as many people as is humanly possible what we offer and also about our business opportunity and then we need to continuously advertise to new potential clients again like any business you've always got to be telling people what you have you can have the best products in the world but if no one knows about it you're not going to get anywhere then we have to open the shop our business for enough hours every week so see enough clients and critically close those discussions to make sure they make purchases. If we see lots of clients, but they all walk out without buying because we're not very good at the close, then also that's not going to help us to get to where we want to be in with our goals. Then obviously over time, we're going to have a client base and we need to look after that growing client base so like a hairdresser you go in you have your hair cut you go to the till and you pay and while you're there they put you in for your next appointment six weeks later because they want to keep their loyal customer base if you go to a supermarket and buy something you sign up to their loyalty card then they start sending you offers discount vouchers because they absolutely want you to come back to their shop again they don't want you to go to another shop and that's like us we need to look after nurture love on our client base give them ideas tips about new products things that they might want to get involved in after they've made their first initial purchase and that's where the magic will come and then obviously we need to keep promoting the business opportunity too and if people join our team then we need to invest time to support them as they grow okay now probably everyone knows this again but i'm just stating the obvious and if there's anyone who doesn't kind of fully sometimes things just click for you so obviously the network marketing business model is absolutely genius and i say that as someone who worked for 15 years for barclays in a big corporate and for nine years with the franchise it is truly the best business model i've ever seen and that comes from someone who was properly skeptical before it is like the best of a corporate model combined with the best of a franchise model and the worst of none of them so it's amazing obviously what we do is we become a product to the product because you have to use your own product you can't be sitting in costa drinking starbucks coffee like that's just not realistic like you need to be loving your own product so you can truly talk with them with passion with enthusiasm with authenticity then we share those products with other people who eventually become our own personal clients then as i say similar to a franchise model we teach other people to run their own businesses as well with and find their own clients and then we teach them to share the business with other people in the same way that we did with them and that creates your overall organization through which you distribute products so when you're looking down at your business it doesn't matter if your business is just you at the moment it's already four people it's already 10 people or it's already 50 people or it's already 4,000 people that's your whole organization and Arbonne are going to thank you for creating that distribution network through which all these products are being um, moved to help all these clients have a brilliant result 
consult with uh, the products, which is great. So that's kind of what your overall team is or could look like in the future. So again, this, oh, I don't know if you can see if the pictures are on the right hand side, you'll have to move them across to the left. Hopefully everyone will know what I mean when I talk about the napkin presentation. If you don't know what that means, go back to your offline and they can help to teach because it's a really, really brilliant way to explain to people how this business works. I'm not going to go into it in detail. There's a couple of really great videos that Danny's done in the Hello Future if you're not sure about this. Um, so effectively, this is where we're saying this is how big our businesses can grow. So it starts off with us at the top, us with our very own shop. And some people just run their very own shop personally forever, just them and their clients. But then if you do that, you're not really getting the full benefit of what the network marketing model can do. Because what we can do is we can help people obviously with the products and with, but also with the business. So if each of us were to find five people who genuinely wanted to run their own business and were really positive and motivated and want to run a business, those first five and then we've created five other people all running our businesses and our bond's super happy because then there's six. Oh, my internet connection's unstable. I'm just going to give it a minute before I come back. Uh, Tamsin, give me a smile. Can you just give me a wave if you can hear me? Yeah, she's She's wavy. Okay, brilliant. Um, so there's us plus five. And then if we then teach and train each of those five people to genuinely find five people who are over the moon about starting up the Rabon business, being part of this fun community, then obviously there's 25 people more at the next level. Um, and then if those 25 people all find another five people each, that makes a grand total of 156 people. So if that is compared to like your Costa coffee or something like that, that's like having 156 coffee in different places all around the world in six countries potentially um, all helping clients to enjoy the amazing Arbonne products and those are all your whole amazing team and probably if you have 156 people in your success line who are all genuinely actively working their business you'd probably be a national vice president which would be pretty amazing so I just want people to know and if you don't fully understand that and see how your business can grow then make sure you really understand that because that's the magic of network marketing okay so the question then when we're going to go setting is how big a business do you want and how much time can you choose to make available to run that and the little graphic there is quite a good exercise for each of us to do and I think there's one of the weeks we're going to talk about this in a bit more detail around time management and planning is how much time do you genuinely have so there's in each week there's 164 hours in every day there's 1440 minutes and it is just purely priorities about how we use that time so if you look at the little um, graphic there the little what's that called pie chart um, obviously some of the time we're going to work some of the time we're doing eating showering sleeping traveling and so on but everyone has some other time that they choose to use in different ways the socializing going to the gym that kind of thing so when when we're thinking about our goals you just need to look at your own diary how much time you've got and where do you want to fit in your Avon business then you're going to think about your drivers so hopefully everyone on this call has done some version of articulating why they're running their Avon business so when we start our new consultants now and, and I I think Danny challenged us a few weeks ago to write our 21 reasons why we're doing this business 21 just because it's a good number and it makes you really really think about all the different things that this will give you um, but this list here more or less comes from a book called the questions of the answers which is one of a really good book that I love um, and in here it says that most people will have a primary motivating factor for doing this and often it will be a pain rather than the pleasure that motivates you because that's the sort of thing so if you know you can't pay your bills then that's a really good motivating factor so there are different reasons and for us when we're thinking about our goals I want every one of you to make sure you're really clear about why you're doing this and what running your app on business will give you similarly obviously as part of our one-to-one -one process when we're doing a business one-to-one -one, we ask people what would you do if time and money were no object where would you live um, what holidays would you go on what car might you drive are there friends and family that you would help community charities and if you carry on doing what you're doing now how close will you be to that dream life that you could have if you had more time and money flexibility um, and again that's useful for us because we need to have clarity about what that why is and where we want to try to get to before we then work on what our goals are so I suppose my challenge to each of you is how big is your vision so in this business obviously can be anything from a few odd pounds here and there just ad hoc as things come up maybe every few months anything up to a really incredible multi-million pound multi-million dollar business and again it can be anything from a one-man band serving your own clients which is great lots of people love just doing that to a huge organization so I think Donna John and um, who's our ultimate upline 
I think she has 30,000 people who have started an Arbon business because she started her business. And so they're all in her success line. So it can be something from something tiny to something literally mind blowingly huge. Um, and we just need to kind of work out when we're setting our goals, like where do we want to be like in that? And sometimes that grows with us. So a lot of people might start out wanting to earn 500 pounds a month and then ultimately end up becoming a national vice president so sometimes that will grow as you go through and you see more this uh, forgive me these might be last year's figures i can't remember but these are broadly the right sorts of figures so obviously everyone probably knows we have four compensation levels and hopefully everyone is able to without referring to this chart to be able to run through the approximate figures around averages that's really useful for you to make sure you're clear in your mind about how much you would earn at different levels so that when you're setting your own goals you need to say if your driver is earning some income then you need to say what income do i want to get to therefore what level do i need to be at therefore what does my team need to look like or my personal sales need to look like to get to whatever my personal goal is so obviously the district manager you're earning a few extra hundred pounds a month area manager maybe a thousand to a couple of thousand three thousand maybe at the top end regional vice president about three and a half like anything probably from two and a half up to about seven thousand it would be the range national vice president average obviously around twelve thousand a month ranging perhaps from say ten thousand up to unlimited so there's people that earn fifty thousand a month and more so we know that this is can be anything at different levels so when we're setting our goals we need to say how much do we want to earn how much do we need to earn or how many people's lives do you want to change? Like whatever the reasons are why you're gonna start this business. How much time can we prioritize each month? Um, and obviously we're paid in proportion to our sales. And I don't know if people can see on the right hand side, I'll share these slides afterwards if you can't quite see, but I've kind of replaced the time to, um, to position with the monthly success line QV. So again, if you're not really au fait with kind of where you need to be at those different levels, you can speak to your upline um, and they can tell you. So ultimately this is a business and you need to be able to think like as a business person, businessman, businesswoman, um, what do you need your business to look like to allow it to you to earn what you want it to earn? Okay, so with this, I'm just going to say, for those of you who know about my trainings, there's lots of other people in Arbonne who are very good at kind of fluffy, like lovey kind of trainings. Mine that are quite like about the numbers and the business. So bear with me on that. Okay, so the next slide, hold on a moment. Oh, it's going to move for me. Okay, so again, this comes from the ICCS. So if you type it, the first slide there came from the Is Arbonne For You flyer, which you can find on the source. This comes from the ICCS, the uh, Independent Consultant Compensation Scheme flyer, which is a one page, also quite useful. Those previous figures were um, monthlies. These are an annualized figures, so they're just obviously for the whole year. So obviously I've circled there the average annual earnings. And um, just down the bottom, obviously made the point that those are income before cost so there's always going to be some cost in any business so don't be surprised when you have some cost because every business requires you to have costs so that might be samples training traveling and um, so don't kind of sit there boo-hooing every time you've got a little cost like that's just an all part of your business you're going to have a level of cost that then you need to pay so that then your income each month or each week needs to then offset a little bit of those costs that it's cost to generate that income Okay, so what we want you to do is after this evening, or you can start thinking about as we're going through, is make sure you are totally clear about what your vision is. And you can create a vision board if you don't know what that is, speak to your upline or a vision video where you've got almost pictures or images of what this is going to give you so that you can really focus on what life is going to look like when you've built this business in a year in two years in five years and then you need to tell important people in your life your family or your friends and get really excited and passionate about that vision the more proud and passionate you can be the more likely your business is going to be flourishing and, and then we need to take that vision and those dreams and then make an actual plan to achieve your vision. You need to remember that things take time to grow. And then like my husband, 14 years to become a consultant, he didn't bail out in like week five because he thought it was a bit hard work and he wasn't doing anything interesting. No, you have to like do it over time. We're all learning a totally new profession and a new business when we start this business. Um, and we absolutely need to go to work. Like there's no two ways about this. Like we need to graft in any business. And sometimes that graft is harder at the beginning when you're not getting very much income, but you need to know that it's gonna come over time. 
Okay, now this was something that when we went to the vice president meeting um, recently, uh, they had Derek Redmond there, who is the was one of the Olympic sprinters in the team that won gold in the Olympics in I think 1991, um, and he said that this is something that I think across the board the Olympic teams do um, in the UK, where they break down their big vision into smaller goals and to things that you can actually control. So if your vision, in his example, was winning the gold medal, and then they train for four years to win the gold medal now that obviously isn't realistic every single day to be thinking i'm jumping up out of bed at 5 a.m so that i can win the gold medal in four years time that's a bit like because saying i'm going to jump out of bed and become a national vice president when you started your business three weeks ago and um, like it's good to have a long-term vision but you need to kind of break it down to something that you can actually control so that then you can work on it properly so if the top of the triangle is your big vision so it might be becoming an area manager or it might be becoming a national vice president and then the next bit down or that first bit there you haven't really got any control over that day to day there's not things that you can do every day that like just thinking about it is going to make that happen so then if you go down the triangle the next bit is trying to think well what would that actually genuinely take so from his example if he wanted to win a gold medal he knew what the seconds were he had to run his part of the race in a certain number of seconds so that was kind of making it more real like what does it actually take so what it actually takes to become an area manager is doing having a business that's turning over ten thousand dollars of product sales a month or more what it actually takes to become a national vice president is one having one turning over one hundred and sixty thousand dollars month and probably 150 people something like that so you've got some then level of control and kind of visualization about what that really means and then the bit at the bottom of the triangle is the bit that we have every single day total control over and we can set proper short-term goals around these bits which will be the bits which ultimately turn into the big outcome that we want so this is about how many people have i asked every day to take a look at the business or the product how many events have i run how many one-to-ones have i been to how many new people have i met how many product trials have i dropped off how many trainings have i been to how many books have i read how many things have i watched that are important and and those are where we can set monthly or weekly goals around those and then we set those goals based on what we want the top of the triangle to look like so therefore we can kind of say we're in control about those bits day to day okay so i'll say here so we what we need to do is set some big annual maybe or monthly goals i mean normal businesses set annual goals so when i used to work for barclays i used to have we used to have forecasts for the whole month like the whole year every month and we'd have a big board meeting at the end of each month and we'd look at where we were against the goal that we thought we were going to set for ourselves every single month and then decide if we needed to revisit the plans for the rest of the year that kind of thing that is normal business practice so ideally you want to say where am i going to be in a whole year maybe where am i going to be in three months or in the next month and then where do i want to be this week and we are our own boss in this business and that is both the best thing in the world and the worst thing in the world sometimes because it means there's no one there to tell us off to give us a bit of a bollocking if we don't turn up on Friday with the report written or whatever and because we all know that when we've been if we've been in an employed job we probably work extra hard certain times to reach a deadline and that's us who have to set that deadline so we need a level of self-discipline um, and so what's really good to do every single month is to say right what am I personally however big my team is what am I personally going to have as my goal for how many people I'm going to sponsor how many new business builders am I going to try and bring into my business this month how many new preferred clients am I going to bring in and then what does my overall business look like so if there's more than just me in my business how many um, sponsors new ICs and PCs are going to come into my business um, this month um, and obviously we put sponsoring first and we're trying to to really reinforce this that sponsoring numbers are the most important thing in this business if you're just bringing in qv that doesn't create business in the future um, and you always then have to having to run to catch up to recreate that qv every single month what matters is the lifeblood of the business which is new clients new business builders coming in so always think about your sponsoring numbers first and then the qvs will follow off the back of those so then what's going to be my personal goal for how many qvs i'm going to bring in and then what's going to be my goal for the whole team what everyone is going to be able to do in my whole organization and then you can set little goals as well for yourself how many presentations am i going to do this week how many one-to-ones am i going to do how many product trials am i going to get out and ideally you want to give yourself some stretch goals that feel a bit exciting and a bit nerve-wracking about how you're going to get there and then some absolute no matter what i'm not going to sleep at the end of the, the last day of the month unless i've got to this goal and again those things will be linked to your own personal why what do you need to achieve 
Okay, and then each month you can then look at the goals you set for yourself at the beginning of the month, say how well did you do based on in on the previous month, and if you didn't achieve your goal, then you need to say to yourself, why did I not achieve it? Because otherwise we never get any better. We're just like, you know, don't they say madness is just doing the same thing over and over again? So we then need to revisit and say, right, what can I improve in my system? Or was it just something out of my control that I couldn't do anything about? But if it is that I didn't ask the number of people who I said I was going to ask, or I asked a lot of people, but I didn't get a result, then something is broken in that link and we need to just think, Mm, like what could I do to change that what could I do to improve is there another training could I try a different technique if I'm getting from asking but I'm not booking enough presentations one-to-ones product trials again what can I do to improve that and if I'm not then I'm getting to that point but I'm not then getting to a successful outcome a yes not as many as I thought I was going to again what can I do to help that bit or can I do more to help my team or to help them to achieve their goals and then obviously make necessary adjustments to your business and your activity level or your skills wherever you think is needed every month to help you to be more like to meet the goals that you set um so the most the way that we can help ourselves to be most successful is to have a clear why and vision first of all because unless you've got that you'll never prioritize your business over all the other things that are around you and you won't have worked out like really truly why am i doing this business how much time do i want to give to it so that is really important to have that then you want to have clear goals and there's this little mnemonic c smart that some people find useful to use so goals need to be challenging, otherwise where's the fun in them? Um, specifics, you need to be able to really articulate what's the goal, as in how many people I'm gonna sponsor. You need to be able to measure it in numbers. Um, it needs to be to challenging, but also achievable and realistic. And then it needs to have a time scale. So it's by the end of this month, by the end of three months time, by the end of six months, I'm gonna be a national vice president, wherever it may be. And then you need to write down your goals. So there is massive evidence that if you write down your goals, it is about, I don't know what percentage, many times more likely that you'll actually achieve them and if you write them down and tell everyone about them it's even more successful so you want to be writing down your goals we have this goal card format and um, again if you haven't got that already ask your upline write down your goal stick it up in every part of your house I know Danny has it in like 10 places around her house so that you see it every time you look at the kitchen cupboard every time you get in your car every time you're brushing your teeth and that is incredibly effective so put down your goals everywhere you can do your affirmations as well and then tell other people make yourself accountable to someone other than you now I find telling my children very effective because then they harangue me every single day to the year through the month and I feel like I don't want to let them down um, but if you don't have a family member or a partner that you want to share those with then make yourself accountable to somebody else so a coach another person within the business either in your team somewhere else and another friend whatever it might be will be a really good way to allow your goals to be something that you are successful with and then I want you to remember that anything is possible in Arvon so someone just like every single one of us is already making this huge success in Arvon so whatever our excuses are our reasons why we're not making successful somebody else has managed to do it anyway so whatever environment you live in we've all got the same world we've all got 550 million people in six countries to go out and talk to about our bond um, and so yeah we've all got that there's no disadvantage to anyone like we've all got the same world we've all got the same product we've all got the same website everything is the same the only difference is, is each one of us about what we want to achieve how much we want to push and it's absolutely fine wherever you want to get to so your journey is your own and do what feels right for you and if you're someone who wants to just who you know who wants to stay running your own shop, loving on your clients, then that's absolutely brilliant. But just know and believe that you can do more probably than you think you can. And um, because this business is incredible and we learn and we grow and we become a new person. So allow yourself to be coached by your upline, allow them to nudge you occasionally and give you a few more challenges and see if you can do things, take baby steps if necessary. Because when we help people with the business side of this and we bring people in, sponsor them into this business, I swear it is the best part of this business because it's like having the best client ever because they get to use all the products so all the reasons why you want to help your clients you help that person but you also give them choices you get allowed to be part of this amazing community so just know that anything is possible in Arban. it is the best business you are in the best place at the best time this year 2020 is going to be absolutely astonishing for what is going to happen to Arban as an overall business and how we're going to change the world so people whatever else is going on in the world at the moment you just need to zone that out because people are still wanting ethical sustainable products they're still washing their hair they're still moisturizing their face they're still 
putting their deodorant on. They still want to use ethical, clean, amazing products. They've still got health conditions. They still want to live healthier. So just be positive. There are always winners in every situation. So let's go out there over this next few months. This is the best period. I swear, this is the best period of the whole year. I absolutely love this time of year. March, April, May, June. It's just such a fun time to be running an Arbonne business and you can totally explode your business in this period. So go out today. Think now before you go to bed, am I clear on my goal for March? If I'm, if I set a goal for March, obviously we're here on the 9th and I'm not quite where I thought I was going to be. There is plenty of time, still 22 days or whatever it is. You can absolutely do anything that you want to by the end of this month. So just go out there, be brave, be bold, get yourself into qual for area, come with us to the Ritz, you know, whatever it may be that your goal is, you can totally achieve it. So write it down everywhere. Tell everyone in your family, Tell, put it on the do more, wherever you want to tell everyone what your goal is, whatever it is that works for you. Come into the goal card WhatsApp chat and let's go chase the world. Yay! <laughs> Super exciting. Right, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for now. See if I can see you all. Oh, Danny says she didn't do the goal. Oh my goodness, there's 68 people. Right. So I think what we'll do is it's 9.37. So I'm going to stop recording. So if you are watching this on record, apologies, you're going to miss the after party. Um, but I will stop the recording now. Hold on.